in today's video, I'm going to be doing another personal Q&A. About a week and a half ago, I did the first part of this video, but you guys asked me such awesome questions and so many of them that I decided to split this video up into two parts. So today is part two of a personal Q&A. And so I have a bunch of questions on my phone. Again, I did a part one of this about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, and so I'll have that linked like up here if you didn't see, I think it's over here, if you didn't see part one of that. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Uh, I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you click the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload, which is generally twice a week. And go follow me on Instagram if you want as well. I generally do like daily stories over there. And so without further ado, let's get into like a personal, private, maybe revealing some secrets Q&A. Okay, let's just jump right in. Okay, so Scrap Cat asked, have you been able to visit your mom or brother recently? How are they doing? So if you watched my last video on Tuesday, you would know, should I tell you in this video? Yeah, you would know that I left Nashville. And for the next couple weeks or so, I'm going to be on Long Island. And while I'm not gonna be telling you guys exactly where I'm staying or who I'm staying with, I have been able to see my mom and my brother. Um, and they're both doing really well. My brother hurt his knee. Um, and so he's kind of dealing with that. Um, but besides that, they're both doing really well. Thank you for asking. That was very sweet of you to ask. Lovely Leash asked, I'm not sure that you've done a video on your tattoos yet, but I'd love to know the meaning behind some of them. So I did do a tattoo tour. I think I've done that twice over the years, but the last one was probably like two years ago. So I'll just kind of talk to you about a couple of them right now, but I do have like a proper like talking about my tattoos video if you want to check that out. But I'll just mention a couple of them here. Um, basically, let's see, this one is the Tetons. This is the last tattoo that I got, which was like five or six years ago. I have eight tattoos, but I got them all within like a three year span and I haven't gotten one since. I might get more, but I don't know, um, probably but maybe. Anyway, uh, this is the Grand Tetons, my favorite place in the entire world. Um, and it accidentally has the scream face in it. Can you see? Oh, I got scratched. What is this? I got scratched. Um, can you see the scream face? I can see it a lot from like my angle, but like those are the eyes and that's the mouth. Can you see it? That was an accident. I did not know about that. I did not want that, but yeah, Grand Tetons, my favorite place in the world. Love it. Um, this Puzzle piece is for my brother who has autism and that's like the kind of like the symbol for autism awareness. Um, this is Long Island, it's where I'm from, where I'm at right now. Um, let's do like one more. I have the word here, which when I got it was a very like live in the moment, be present kind of reminder. Um, and I have four more tattoos on one of on my arm and three on my legs. Um, but again, if you want like the full tattoo tour, I'll link the video up here. Okay, so someone asked, are you going to be doing your Bible study channel again anytime soon? You guys want to know a secret? It's not really a secret. But uh, do you guys want to know what I'm doing today? Like, right when this video gets posted? So, a lot of you guys might know that I had a Bible study Instagram account. I launched it a few years ago and I was doing like weekly Bible studies, but it did not last very long. The weekly Bible studies did not last very long. I got a little just overwhelmed with that format and I did not think that it was the best format to be doing a Bible study like that in the way that I would want to do it. But I've been thinking, well, okay, I still wanna have like a Christian group, but how do I do it? So I today, today, what day is it? The 11th? June 11th, am launching a Christian community Facebook group and I'm so excited. It is starting today and essentially what this community is going to be. First of all, it is only for women um, because I want it to be a place where women can feel safe to say whatever they want in a safe space of other like like-minded women. I know that some people really like co-ed Bible study groups or Christian communities, but this one I specifically wanted it to be a women's group. The other reason to, for wanting it to be a women's group is because Christian women, having Christian women friends is really important and even me personally I don't have any I don't have any like Christian women good friends that I can talk to or rely on and so part of the reason again is so that women feel safe in the group to say what they want to say and also that women can connect with other women and so I'm starting this group today it is going to be a community group so it's not going to be a Bible study group it's not going to be like a weekly meetup or anything like that it is literally going to be if you are a Christian woman 
you can join this group and basically what it's gonna be is a big community. This is the place that I want women to be able to go to where they feel safe to just speak with other Christian women and maybe get some advice or get some prayers or even get some like encouragement, that's what this group is going to be. And I'm gonna be in there as well chatting, but it's not going to be a formally led group. It's going to be where you can go, everyone can chat amongst themselves, hopefully make some friends, hopefully get some encouragement and be there for each other and share things with each other and just have a Christian community because I know even biblically that like God wants us to have a community. And so if you are a Christian woman, I would love to have you join and yeah I'm just really really excited so thank you for asking me that question because I am excited to share that with you guys again and I really hope again that if you're a Christian woman and you want an online community where you can just connect with other Christian women I would really really hope that you would join this group and yeah so the link is going to be in my description and I will talk about it in my next few videos as well um, and uh, yeah I'm really 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 excited I'm so excited so anyway I really hope that that's something that you guys are interested in and that you guys are excited about too. And again, I'll have the link in my description. Okay, Scott asks, this is a good question. How do you handle everyone knowing your private life due to being on social media? So I could talk about this for hours in terms of social media and how people treat people and stuff like that. I could talk about this for hours. I actually do. Like with my friends and stuff, we talk about this all the time. The shortest explanation I could give you with like, how do I handle social media and how do I handle people knowing my private life is that I control what I can control. And so some of the things that I can control within my own life, there's a lot of things I can control, but some of the things are what I say, who I say them to, and how I act. I control what I share online. So I'm not going to share something unless I am comfortable sharing it. I do not control how other people react or how other people see me. That is not only based on me, but it's based on their background knowledge, their assumptions, what they heard from someone else, and what they decide to think about me. This has to do with everyone. People have views of other people, partially based on how this person acts and whatever, but also a bigger part of that is this person's background knowledge, this person's assumptions, this person's desired outcome. And we do not get to control that. We do not get to control how other people see us because we could be the nicest, kindest, most loving people in the entire world and some people are still gonna be mad, some people are still not gonna like us. That's on them. That's on their background knowledge, that's on their thought processes, that's on what they want to be thinking. And most people, most people are so nice and so kind and so loving, but there are some people who are more negative, um, who spread negative mean things. And that's usually coming from something deep inside themselves that they're not dealing with. There's something negative going on within themselves because if they were super content with themselves, they would never purposefully want to be rude to someone else. And so people who are spreading negativity, I understand that that's probably because they're hurting. And so I pray for them and I just always hope and I sound like I'm like a Miss America pageant contestant right now. I always hope for the best in humanity. I always hope that people are working on themselves, that people are finding things that they enjoy, that people are praising God, that they're working on their relationships with God, with people, that they are working towards a better version of themselves. And so the people who are constantly spewing negativity, if they're working on themselves, they're, um, they might need to change some things about that because they're probably not working on themselves in a productive way. And so again, I control what I do and what I say. I do not control how other people react to it or how they hear it because some people, if they're gonna be negative, they're gonna be negative no matter what. They're gonna be negative no matter what. And so they just need to work on themselves. And what we can do is pray for those people. We can pray for those people who are hurting in such a way that they wanna take it out on others. Um, we can just pray for those people. So I don't control their reactions. And that's just one of the parts of being on social media is I know that I get to control what I get to control in hopes that you know humanity just wants to be nicer to each other. When I see bullying, whether it has to do with me or not, if I see someone leave a negative comment to someone else, I just wish the best for all those people involved because we don't need that. Life is hard enough. And I always think that even if you're hurting, even if you have something bad going on, do the best you can to still spread kindness. Because you know what? If you're in a bad mood or something bad happened or you have something really horrible going on, if you spread positivity, instead of spreading negativity, because spreading negativity might be like the initial thing that you wanna do. Like, oh, I'm just gonna like let my anger out and get it on everyone else and let everyone else see my anger. But you know what? You know what I bet? And maybe do this the next time you feel the need to like be angry. Instead, see if you can be nice. 
If you're about to leave a comment, I hate your shirt. Maybe instead either don't leave the comment or say, uh, I like your glasses. Spreading positivity will not only be nice to the other person, but it will make you feel better than spreading negativity. I swear. And so I know that generally people who are spreading the negativity are really hurting, but I hope that next time you feel the, the desire or the push or the like, oh, like the need to be mean to someone else, especially like a stranger online where like you don't even really personally know them. I want to challenge you to stop yourself before you do it and see if you can either just not do it at all or say something positive instead. Even if it's just in your head, even if you just say the positive thing in your head, or if you say it out loud or you type it to whatever, I challenge you to do that because not only is it nice to spread kindness, but I think it'll make you feel better to spread kindness as well. So I see that as a win-win. Anyway, didn't I say I'm gonna give you the shortest version I can and that was still like an hour, but I control what I can control and I hope that other people have enough discernment and enough desire of control over themselves to always just want to be as kind as we can want to be as kind as we can to other people because life is really hard you know let's try to be kind when we can uh someone asked do you keep a journal or a diary even an electronic one no and i'm starting to kind of regret that i haven't done that yet so maybe i'll start just doing like the one minute a day thing like right when i wake up or like right before i go to sleep just write down something for a minute because i like the idea of being able to like go back and be like oh that's when that happened or like oh i forgot that happened you know but I do have all my YouTube videos. <laughs> I haven't been on YouTube since I was, what, 28 or something like that. What's cool about that, like even if you guys don't have a YouTube channel or don't vlog or don't do anything social media wise, don't like post publicly, it is kind of cool to have pictures and videos as like a diary. I know some people, I don't like this. I know when some people say like, oh, if you're taking pictures and taking video, like you're not really paying attention to what's actually going on. I don't believe that at all. I think you can pay attention and be in the moment and still take pictures and video of it. Sorry, I had to delete footage. Close enough. But yeah, if you have a really bad memory, having videos and pictures and stuff is like a really good like jog of your memory for the future. And so if you're someone who doesn't take a lot of pictures or videos, especially video, I would maybe recommend every once in a while start taking little clips of videos because I think that's like a good diary. But I also do like the idea of having a physical written one. So maybe I'll start doing that. I do take notes and stuff on my phone, but that's not like a diary. That's more like if I have a thought that I want to write down because I don't want to uh, forget it. But a proper diary, I think, is a good idea. Do you guys keep a diary or a journal, whatever you want to call it? Um, let me know in the comments because I think it could be a good idea. All right, Slim Jim asks, what do you miss most about living in your car? <sighs> there, for me, and let me know if you guys have felt the same way if you've ever lived in the car. There was a sense of freedom that I think that you can still have if you live in a house and you do it properly. But for me, I just had a sense of freedom in the car that like, uh, I felt a little bit more like, like I could do anything. I didn't feel as stuck. I just feel more stuck when I'm long-term in a house. And I don't know if that's a forever thing. I don't know if that's just where I'm at right now. Cause like if I get married, I assume I'll be in a house and I'll probably be okay. I hope I'll be okay with that. But at least the way that I've done it, there's something just different about being in the car in terms of like a freedom aspect and a less stuck aspect. And I kind of felt like I was doing more of what I was supposed to be doing, you know? And the last year, especially like I got very low and I'm not gonna blame that on the fact that I lived in a house, but I know that that didn't help. It was harder for me to get out of the house, to go do anything. When I was in the car, I was already out. I was already outside. Um, I mean, you're in the car, but still, like I could see outside. Literally, I just, oh, outside's right there. Like it was just easier. And I don't do things because they're easy, but it just had a different mentality of it. Um, like the apartment that I was just living in Nashville, we were a third floor walk up and we didn't have a balcony. And so literally even just going outside to me felt like a process of walking down three flights of stairs. And then that just led to a parking lot. And so I would have had to then walk across the parking lot to go get to my car. And it just seemed more like a process to me. And that mixed with my depression. And again, if you guys have severe depression, I'm sure you can relate to this. Walking down three flights of stairs and then walking across a parking lot to go to my car seemed like way too much to do on a lot of days or to go for a walk or something like that seemed like way too much to do. And when I was already in the car, I'm already in the car. I can go drive anywhere. I can already go for a walk because it's right here. It was just, again, I don't do things because they're easy, but it just was 
a different mindset almost of like I was already four steps in. Like if my goal was to go for a walk, being in the car is already like a couple steps past being in the apartment. In the apartment, it's like, okay, now that I have everything around me, let me make sure that I don't leave without my water bottle. Let me make sure that I have my right shoes. Let me walk down all these stairs, go to my car, go drive somewhere else. That's like a bunch of steps. But when I'm already in my car and everything I own is already in my car, that takes out so much of those first initial steps. And sometimes for me, again, especially when my depression is really, really bad, some of those initial steps are the hardest ones. And so when I'm already in the car, when all my stuff is already with me, I feel like I skipped those hard first few steps and I'm already halfway to going to do something. So I also miss having all my stuff with me all the time. I know that I still have a bunch of stuff in the car, but I miss having everything with me. I miss that a lot too. But anyway, so that's, that's the answer to that question. Funky Fork asked, what have you been doing in your free time? Anyone new? So anyone new, I assume that you're asking if I'm dating. I'm trying to date. It's not working out so well. <laughs> it's really, really not working out so well. I think I mentioned that in one of my last videos. Like if you know a good Christian man who wants to date me, let me know. DM me on Instagram or email me or something. No one knew. No one knew. Um, but what do I do in my spare time? Um, I just said that so fast. <laughs> What have I been doing in my spare time? I've been watching Ugly Betty. I think I mentioned in a recent video that I was like, well, actually, I think it was a recent video from like a week ago, but I recorded part of that like a month ago. But I think I mentioned in that video that I was like halfway through the first season. And that was again, probably six weeks ago or so when I actually started the show, two months ago maybe when I started. But I've been watching a lot of it the last like week or two. Um, and so now I'm on the last season and I'm on episode, I think there's 20 episodes in the last season and I'm on episode like 18. So I'll probably finish it today. Uh, I'm so bummed, I love it. I love Ugly Betty, I love it. It's the perfect amount of like silly drama uh, cause I'm not super into like really dramatic shows or like really cliffhangery kind of shows. And like, yes, this show has cliffhangers, but they're more lighthearted ones. I don't really know how to say that unless you've seen the show. Like you're not like worrying about it. You know what I mean? I don't like shows that like make you anxious or worry. This one is like a lighthearted fun kind of drama. So I'm very upset that it's going to be over. I mean, it's been over for like 15 years, but I'm really upset that I'm going to watch the last episode probably in the, probably tonight. I'm probably gonna watch it tonight or tomorrow, but I love it. If you have any recommendations for lighthearted, funny, silly TV shows, let me know in the comments. I asked you guys a lot of things to let me know in the comments, so I'm expecting a lot of comments on this video. Is this the question? No, it was, what are you doing in your spare time? Watching TV. <laughs> I've been doing some of my sticker books. I've been going through my stuff. Like I went through all my stuff before I left Nashville, but now I'm going through it again because if I do plan on traveling, move back to my car, I gotta get rid of like half the stuff I own and just go back to being more minimalistic, you know? And so I've been going through a lot of stuff, organizing stuff. Yeah, so cleaning and organizing and watching TV. And uh, that's kind of it. That's kind of it. That's what I've been doing in my spare time. And um, I've been able to see some of my friends and family recently, which has been really cool too. Last night I saw one of my friends who I haven't seen in like two or three years. So that was really cool. If you're watching, hi. Okay, I had to delete footage again. Um, that angle I think is really trash. Wow, uh, Katie, get your act together. Okay, so I think a lot of those were a little bit more lighthearted. So let's do one more serious question. Someone asked, do you take medicine now for your anxiety? Uh, no, I am not on any medication. I am still in therapy for some of the stuff that I am struggling with with my mental health, but I am not taking any medication. I'm not against medication. I'm just not currently on any. I have been in the past um, and I've tried honestly probably about a dozen medications since I was 19 and all of them either didn't work and or I was allergic to them. So there were, I can think of three off the top of my head that made me either violently ill or I have like an allergic reaction rash too. And so I am a little more nervous now to try new medications, um, but I'm not anti them. So I might try another one in the future, but no, I'm not on anything right now. All right, one more about mental health and then we're done. Misty asked, do you share your diagnoses with someone after you're dating them for a little bit? So in my last Q and A that I did a week and a half, two weeks ago, I mentioned that a lot of you guys know that I struggle with my mental health and you know some of my symptoms and you know a couple of my diagnoses, but I'm going to keep some of my diagnoses and some of my symptoms private from the internet. Just like I was saying earlier, I get to choose what I share and what I don't share and that's just something that I'm not comfortable sharing with the general public, but if I am dating someone for 
a decent amount of time. Like if we're in like a relationship, yes, I will tell them my diagnoses. Hopefully it will give them a little bit more understanding if they know my diagnoses. So yes, if I'm dating someone, I will generally tell them what I'm dealing with after I feel safe enough with them to share that. Yeah. All right. I think it's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed another little serious Q&A. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram because that's where I ask you guys to ask me the questions for the Q&A. And so if you want to be a part of any future one, please follow me on Instagram. It's just Katie Carney over there. And I hope that you're subscribed here too for more lifestyle and travel content because you guys know I left Nashville. I'm in New York for a few weeks, but then I don't know where I'm going. And then also while I'm here in New York, I'm going to show you a ton of stuff on Long Island and maybe even in New York City. And so I hope that you guys are excited for more travel content. I sure am. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I love you so, 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 so much. I hit my watch on my car. <laughs> thank you so much again for watching. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.